How's everyone doing so far with the walls? I'd like to talk about a practice strategy that might help you with this one. Oh. Let me pull it up. I'm going to go to 243 here. Walls. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, what can you tell me about this piece? It has a broken chord accompaniment. Broken chord accompaniment. And is that easy or hard? Mm. I think it's it, it takes a bit more than block chords. Okay. Because you have to keep it you have to play it rhythmically. Yeah. It's also hard It's hard because your fingers are playing different stuff. Yeah, and you have to jump around. So one of the practice strategies that I teach especially in my intermediate advanced class is called blocking. And I want to teach it to you today. What we're going to do is we are going to block our left hand and blocking is taking your broken chord accompaniment and making it a blocked chord. It's, it's working backwards. So instead of one note at a time, I'm going to play everything that comes in one measure in the left hand all at once. And it forces your hand to set up faster. Where if I'm playing it as a block chord accompaniment, I play one note at a time when my finger gets there. But if my fingers are already there, I'm already set up ready to go when it's my third note's turn to play. Yeah? So that's a good practice strategy is trying to block your left hand chords. Another thing, another strategy that goes right but, along with You know, that. I sort of automatically did that. Good. But I'm still having trouble trying to keep the sequence because of here I'm playing one and here. You know, yeah. It's hard to put both hands together. Sure. We'll talk about that in a second. Another practice strategy that's good is to analyze what you're playing. So this first chord is what kind of a chord? Yes. Oh, chord, chord it's uh, C. C major. C major. So we have a C major and a C major. What kind of chord do we have here? We've got B, D, and G. Oh, it's inverted. Yes, it's an inverted G chord. So it's a G chord with B in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Or a first inversion G chord. Good. Back to C chord, C chord, C chord. Now, what kind of chord do we have here? A G7 chord missing the root. That's how I'm going to analyze it. G, D, F, G, it, would, it should be a G, B, D, F. The B is up here in the, in the soprano part. So I'm going to call it a G7. And then we come back to our C chord. All right, this next chord in measure nine we've seen before. What is it? Our G over B. Our G over B. Same thing here. Back to our C chord. Now. I want you to notice at the very bottom of the page, the title of the chapter that this comes from is the two chord. So somewhere in here, we're going to have a two chord. 
Just a heads up, that's coming. All right, next we have a C sharp, an E, and an A. I think it's another inversion. Another mm -hmm. clue is we have a space note, a space note, and a line note. So if we put that line note on the bottom, what do we get? We get an A, an A major. A chord. major. So we have A major slash C sharp. And we get that twice. Okay, next chord, what do we got? Did you call that like an augmented A or something? No, it's an A chord with a C sharp in the bass. So it's an A major first inversion triad. So instead of A being in the bass, C sharp's in the bass and A's on the top. You're right, though. It doesn't belong in our key of C major, though, does it? No, but it sounds really nice when it goes to the next chord, which is a, the minor 2, the D minor. Yeah. The D minor. Good. What is the D minor all about? That is our minor 2. There's our 2 chord. Yeah. Good. I think that progression in, uh, itself is going to make me want to do this piece. It's so really from theory land, this is what we call a secondary dominant. A is the dominant of D, which is the two chord. So we have a five of two, and it always goes to the, not always, but always, pretty much always goes to the chord on the right. So we have a five of two going to a two. But you're right, Edison, it doesn't belong in C major. Those are called secondary dominants, and you learn about those probably in theory three. All right, what's this chord? I've seen it before. It's my G slash B, right? Back to my C chord. Same thing here. All right, what's this chord? F, A, and D. Yeah. Which would make it a D minor once again. D minor slash F. Yeah. And this chord is the G7 again, but up an octave. Back to C. So some people like to memorize by analyzing these chords. So oh, I remember I had a professor that required me to learn a whole piece without touching the piano doing this kind of work. And I, I found that I learned it better than if I just were to hack through it over and over and over and over again. So blocking can also help with this analysis. They kind of go hand in hand. Then you can just break them apart one note at a time.
So that G that G slash B that yeah. means G first inversion. Yeah. Okay. All right. If you want a screenshot, go ahead and take a screenshot. Now we are in three eight. What does that mean? There are three eighth notes in a measure. Okay. And eighth notes. Eighth note gets the beat. So our eighth note is our new pi. So if we were to clap the left hand rhythm, it would be pi, 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 pi. So we pretty much have one note per pulse for every measure of the whole piece. The right hand has a dotted quarter note. What is that going to be? What's my rhythm word? Note extended by counts. So how many counts does it get? Three. Three. So our three count word is? Um, pi, pi, pi. Pi, pi. So let's clap and count the right hand rhythm. Here we go. Pi, 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 Okay, do you remember Doc B's seven steps to learning a piece? Maybe I need to put that doc up in canvas. Step one is the clap and count right hand rhythm. Step two is to play the right hand. Step three is the clap and count left hand rhythm. Step four is to play the left hand. Step five is to tap both hands counting the right hand rhythm. Step six is to tap both hands and count the left hand rhythm. And step seven is to play hands together. So if you will do the work and do all seven steps, guaranteed you'll be able to play the piece. If you can clap it, you can play it. So those are some practice strategies. Just for fun, let's, let's try to do step five. We're going to tap both hands, but we're going to count the right hand rhythm. One, two, three, here we go. Pi 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 Pi, 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 Tap both hands, count 
left hand rhythm values. One, two, three, here we go. Pi, 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 Pi 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 So, those are the hard steps. I got a notification from Sweetwater yesterday that my microphone stand, which I use for my camera stand, has shipped. So, hopefully I'll have some nice overhead video shots for you coming up. Questions on this so far? I think it's an effective way to learn a piece and something yeah. I should probably utilize a bit more. Yeah, I don't I guess I don't have the chart up cuz I think I put it up for piano 1, but I can double check real quick. Something else I might also add to is to note the similarities in rhythm between like every four measures. It's mm -hmm. basically a, just a repeated rhythm every Absolutely. four measures, so let me see if I can find seven steps. Hey, I do have it. <laughs> Let me throw it up in the... Uh, throw it up in the file section of canvas let me uh, open it though so you can screenshot it if you'd like or you can just go download the PDF There it is. Seven steps to learning a piece. If you will do these things, you'll be able to learn a piece. Easy. Not easy necessarily, but guaranteed. If you do the work doing these things, you can do it. Now, it's not going to be step one, check, step two, check, step three, check, step four. It's going to be some of these I need to do a lot of times in a row especially steps five and six steps five and six are the hardest steps I was taught this by a professor named Carol Aker who teaches at the Manhattan School of Music and I believe she was taught these by her professor Vera Wills who also taught at the Manhattan School of Music 